Okay, so final part here with the um, 3135 is putting the automatic module on. Yeah, so we got it here. It's pretty straightforward. And I already inspected the axle, which is in good shape. So this is your rotor and your auto axle. And uh, you will see when it's worn, uh, when you uh, uh, take it apart, there will be a lot of grime and it's kind of like a red rust. I don't know why. Yeah, but... I, I whenever I see Rolexes that are a little bit too old, it's often the rotor that looks... Yeah. really ropey and rusty how yeah. come that's the bit that gets hit the most i'm not sure is it a different metal maybe for it's the a rest? high torque area you've got this moving around a lot yeah yeah you've got this uh, uh active heavy item wearing metal and the jewel is what wears the metal down the jewel is harder than the metal the uh synthetic ruby's got a higher hardness so anyways i put that pinion on there which winds the uh the two reversers and we have our little spring here and it's a clip spring and it holds down the uh, uh, pinion and it snaps right on there you go and it all turns together sometimes it feels a little wild but it'll uh, it gets better when everything's together. And you'll know you've got problems if the rotor starts rubbing on the movement. I get a lot of movements where the there's a stripe of wear on the movement. Well, that's just, spun around. that's just dragging your bumper on the ground. You know, oh, I'm going to keep driving. So you've got two of these red wheels because it mm -hmm. can wind in either mm -hmm. direction. And you can see the little springs there. Yeah, Those are the ones that ratchet i find these are the biggest giveaways to show you a fake rolex as well that's a good fake if that makes sense mm -hmm. is they have red on the wheel but the teeth or the edge is still silver so even on these super clones that are nearly perfect that tends to be the giveaway other than the quality of the machining up close mm -hmm. now this is our drive this is our ratchet driving wheel so that's going perfectly in between the two mm -hmm. Now, it might have another name, but it is a ratchet driving wheel. And he goes on pretty straightforward. There you go. And then we also have our little retaining plate. And he's going to flip around and he goes like that. If you notice, there's a little hole there. We'll go around there. Put him on there. Okay, he's got a little. Here's that little screw we talked about that's, that's different from all the others. Slightly different in height. Might be identical to those other four, but you know, a tweezer to hold that down. Put him down without marring him either. That's it. And all these wheels are ready for the bridge. Looks good. Now there's a little place where we're going to oil before we put the bridge on and that's right we're using hp on here but right here i'm going to take less oil there's a pivot it's a big fat pivot that rides on that jewel that's it and we got them where it needed to be Turn that around. Take a look at the bridge. So these are the flat sides of our jewels. They're all clean. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to set it down vertically. You can see, see how like I kind of like see how my feels on my tweezer. And then let it find it where mm -hmm. it needs to be. Yeah, right there. Bang. And it'll all fall into place right there. Bang, bang.
Hold it down. Something came out of wax. It will start over. Maybe we weren't lined up on those wheels. There we go. Let's try that again. I'm just going to... Now I'm using my brass tweezers, so I'm going to hold it by the pivot. And just come in and... Do that again. And it all lined up. So now we want to do this too without putting a lot of lateral pressure here. Let that screw fall in there. Hold the bridge. Drive him home. Tight. Stabilizer right here, maybe. Try this screw home. Tighten it. It. And we got one more screw. And then there's a discussion out there about auto winders and do you auto test? Do you need to watch in a winder? What when you store it when you're not wearing it? Mm hmm. I don't think you should. Use a winder? Yeah. Interesting. The reason being is I think if you're the sort of person that isn't wearing a watch every day, let's say you have a watch only wear a couple of times a week, if you're leaving it in an auto winder, are you not massively increasing the wear on the watch by having it permanently running? Are we? Well, would you say that the biggest the biggest need for servicing is caused by just time or by wear and movement? You're killing me, Lee. I know. So there we have our automatic module. Now we're going to oil it. So this is all HP. And this is a high-pressure environment. So I've got a little bit of oil on my oiler. Now, I can see with my low-power loop, so I'm going to oil this pivot. Can you see that, Jewel? Yeah. Okay. Did you see it draw? Not quite. Hang on, let me zoom in a bit. But... Okay, let's try the next Jewel. I'll follow you for the next one. Hang on, where are we going? Okay, so I'm coming into that Jewel, and I just let want you to see the oil draw. I'll follow you, yep. You'll see, you'll see the perception change of the reflections on the at the pivot and the Jewel. Watch. Huh. Yeah. Ne neato. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can actually see it sort of yeah. drawing it. And... Yeah. So when I pull my oiler away and there's no oil in my oiler, it's pretty much guaranteed that... It's gone there. <laughs> yeah, it's not disappeared. Unless you OCD and you just go crazy looking for the oil. <laughs> but... Yeah, it's almost like the shape of the reflections and the colors change slightly as the oil's gone onto it. Now we're going to oil the top of the axle too because he has a jewel. And guess what? These jewels do crack. Now, I saw the oil draw, and I am going to clean my oil off the tip of the of the pivot, though. Just a hair like this. Watch. Bang. I did get a little spread there, but... There. I'm going to flip it over. There's three jewels, and we're going to do the same thing again. So you just, uh, what, a little bit of HP on each? Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody inspects my work, I want to make sure that um, we don't have oil all over the place. 
but I am going to check my jewels, you know, just make sure there isn't anything there. And we're going to come in the same way and oil these. And we're just going to Flip, shrink. I don't use an automatic oiler. I think that's cool, I guess. They're expensive. Is it any quicker? Hmm? I guess everybody has, you know, you got these other May not be guys with all the main, all the new tools. It might just be about accuracy if you're not good enough to have a steady enough hand. That's it. I don't know if it helped, but I held my breath. Too. I held my breath just to get it just right for you. That's it. So automatic modules there. All right. And then so I'm going to take the case and bring it over. Take the case out from its dust yep. protection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, we oiled the jewel for the uh, ratchet driving wheel. Mm -hmm. And I bring the module around. And... Uh, it's fairly straightforward to set her down where... There she goes. She's like right about there. That's it. And uh, without the screws in, I can see it. It's got good movement. Yeah. And I can see the uh, ratchet wheel move when I bring it around. Yeah. So that's good. You don't want to crank these screws down if you got a problem. No, because you're only going to make it worse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Put that screw in. And... You get a lot of feel for for just how the screw's going in, whether you've... See, I didn't tighten the screw down, but I could just tell that we're in good shape. But these screws sometimes are the ones that come loose because the watchmaker didn't tighten them down. And then the, the customer brings the watch in and says, my watch stopped. And then it becomes a question of, well, your watch needs to be fixed. It's a $600 service or... Pulling the screw out and getting lucky and putting it on the graph and going, well, actually, uh, you can take your watch home because we just fixed it. And they think you're, like, amazing when it was just a screw. So it's really not me that was amazing. It was the, <laughs> the guy before that, that was amazing. So now, look, if that rotor is coming around, right? Uh-huh. And the, the other way, you are winding it. Yeah. And if we did a good job, it's going to do that in perpetuity. You're all set. Well, until the next service. Yeah, we've got our. Uh, so the final thing you would be doing here now is putting the case back on. Oh, we're going to put it on the. We're going to. We're going to play with it. We're going to put it on the timer and talk okay. about it. And, but that's the end of it. That's it. Yeah. We did. Um, Lovely. It was a lot of fun. Okay. All right.